Welcome to Meet the Drapers. I'm Tim Draper. This is my father, Bill Draper. My sister, Polly Draper. We are here to create the next generation of startup heroes. Every week, three heroes pitch their game-changing ideas to us. We choose one winner to move to the playoffs. Three heroes of our choice then move to the finals. But here's the big twist. You, the viewers, can invest with us in these companies. The three heroes that you fund the most will also move to the finals, where they'll battle it off for half a million dollars. The power is now in your hands. Hey, welcome back everybody to Meet the Drapers. This is our third episode of our fourth season. Can you believe it? People are still watching and we're four seasons in. Unbelievable. Anyway, it's really amazing. There are nine million viewers. Thank you all viewers. We really appreciate you being out there. And you viewers have the opportunity to invest in these companies if you go to meetthedrapers.com. So with that, I'm Tim Draper, I'm a venture capitalist, and I have here with me more Drapers. I have Bill Draper, my father, who is a pioneer of venture capital and has been in the business for many, many years and now runs the Draper Richards Kaplan Foundation. And I've got my sister, Becky, who is a graduate of the Stanford Business School, has been a great businesswoman throughout her career and now is an investor. She also reads to young children and she has two dogs. Becky, welcome to the show. Great to have you. Thank you. I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm so <laughs> glad I got on this show. I can't believe it. It's your big chance. Yeah, I got my big chance. We have with us a guest judge who I guess we're going to adopt as a draper. This is Scott McNeely, founder of Sun Microsystems, one of the most visionary and entrepreneurial people in the entire Silicon Valley. Scott, thanks so much for coming. Good to see you. It's nice to meet all the drapers. I'll just call myself Scott Draper today. And, uh... Scott Draper, <laughs> welcome to the family. Before we get the entrepreneurs in here, as judges, what are the things that are going to drive our decision whether to move this entrepreneur on to the semifinals or not. I'm looking for somebody who's filling a vacuum. It's really tough to move existing people out of the way. I want to see something that's real different, that's going after something in a new and a different way. To do it the same way and use capital to do it is very, very hard. Great. Becky, how about you? What are you going to be looking for today? Uh, exactly what Scott said. No. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be looking for somebody who's got tons of passion, a good track record, and can really explain what their business is in a brief period of time. Terrific. Dad, what are you going to be looking for? I look usually for some unusual talent or expertise or management capability. Terrific. And I think I'm going to be looking for heroism. I'm going to be looking for somebody who's willing to just tear down walls and do whatever it takes to create a new business, a new world for us. We're all kind of looking for a new world. I think we want a hero. So with that, we are ready for our first entrepreneur. But before we hear from them, let's see what's happening behind the scenes. I was personally inspired to work on Ready, Set, Jet after receiving the Mahatma Gandhi Award in 2017 at the British House of Lords. India and the UK came to me and asked me to help empower the girls that were disenfranchised and economically challenged in India. And we decided to create a brand that could scale globally while we could impact millions of women. Earlier this year, we had the opportunity to go into some of the slums and villages in Mumbai and work with girls that don't have access to education after the age of 15. We are visiting Smita and her family in one of the uh, slums in Juhu Beach in Mumbai. 
and she's taken us to visit her home, which is really beautiful, you guys. We thought the best way we could empower them was by giving them skills development, vocational training, and beauty to be the next generation of beauty entrepreneurs. When you look good, you feel good, and you've got that unmatched confidence for unmatched leverage in life. We want to provide a very holistic approach to beauty inside and out. If we win this competition, it would mean everything to us. I truly feel that confident women can change the world. And that is the mission behind Ready, Set, Jet. So our first entrepreneur of the day, Ready, Set, Jet. Give us your pitch. Hey, uh, Drapers, how are you? I'm Shalini Vadera, and I am the founder and CEO of my third brand, Ready, Set, Jet. Ready, Set, Jet is a mission-driven beauty brand that intersects cutting-edge innovative products with EdTech to change the world of beauty. Beauty consumers have changed, and especially in the last year, we have seen a drastic shift in the needs of these consumers. So I want to introduce you to Covey. Covey represents this changing consumer. We have simplified her beauty routine with innovative products that save her time, space, and are fuss-free. We also are very inclusive, so we have brought her targeted solutions to her skin tone issues and skin type issues. And once she falls in love with the products, which she already has, she joins our academy so she's able to be with a like-minded community, learn new skills, and has the tools to thrive. So now let me tell you about our amazing products. Each side of these beauty batons has two to four uses. We've custom formulated amazing vegan skincare stories in every single product. And you can interchange and mix and match your products to create your own beauty itinerary as you travel throughout the day. Our economics around these products are amazing. We're working at a 94% gross margin, and you can literally do your entire face in three full-size batons. As we go from product into the Academy, we're really looking at that as an aggregate for amazing data on what our consumers want, their purchasing power, their skin tone issues and the beauty challenges that they need. A lot of brands have come in and now created 80 different shades of foundation. We're doing it in 12. We want to simplify beauty all the way through. Now, I've got to tell you about our current traction. We've earned over 50 million in earned value media as well as over 6 million in influencer reach. Our average order value is $85, and we have secured amazing contracts. We're launching on Amazon, India, and US within the next month. Our Amazon scale partners have us forecasted in the US alone to hit a million dollars in sales in less than 12 months. And because of the online academy and the importance of skilling women in beauty, We've been approached for two global joint ventures to bring this to different countries around the world. Most importantly, we are a mission-driven brand. Our goal is to impact, empower, and change the world through beauty. I hope you join our tribe and the opportunity of Ready, Set, Jet. Terrific, okay, well, great. First, I, I wanted to get what your revenues were. There were a lot of numbers you threw out there, but not revenue numbers. So Tim, we just launched, um, we did a beta launch mid-June, we sold through a couple thousand dollars of product. Your margins are extraordinarily high. What I was worried about is that you're going into retail or you're going through Amazon, and the only way you can really make money is through e-commerce. But if the margins stay that high, you could do multi-level marketing. You could do a lot of different things. <laughs> well, being that I've been in beauty for 20 years, I have fantastic relationships with the top suppliers and chemists around the world. They know I like to work on very high margins and I'm always looking for unique ways to keep our margin high. Uh, these are your products, right? These are my products. What do you what there did you, you expect go. me to do with them? <laughs> well, you know, it's almost time to give gifts right now. So these make awesome gifts. But we have a lot of men that love the skincare. Ah, I finally figured out what this is. <laughs> this is is this lipstick? No, this is a um, blurring primer. I want to apologize for you landing amid these, all of us, first of all, including me, and I'm a woman and I use makeup, but not very much. Do you do the skills over Instagram? How are you managing to this ed tech element of it? So initially, when we were going to start with the really intense impact, I was actually in India in January and February and had the opportunity to go into the slums of Mumbai and work with girls from the age of 12 to 20. 
um, who were amazing. They had no idea that they had any different options than being either a servant or being married. And once COVID hit and we started getting a lot of women reaching out to us who had lost their jobs saying, you know, we want to become self-sufficient. We don't necessarily want to become an entrepreneur, but we want to know that we can take care of ourselves. Can you help us, Shalini? And that's really when we decided to add the online academy, realizing that this was a much bigger issue for impact than just going into slums and villages. Is it sort of Avon-ish or I'm not, I'm not sure how, the, um, how you visualize this impact on girls in India, say? So two levels, the girls in, you know, the slums and villages that really need the impact so we can help break the cycle of poverty, we're actually giving them the products. And they have the opportunity then to not only learn how to become a beauty content creator, use their phones. If they don't have phones, we're going to provide them phones where they can start selling online, not Avon, but a very robust affiliate program. You're gonna give the product away to them and give them phones. Where is that money gonna come from? Tim, we're working with partners. They buy the products from us at a oh, cost okay. of goods, and then they're distributed, you know, from the impact side of things. You mentioned uh, India and uh, working with a company there. What company was it? So we've signed a deal with a um, Amazon partner in India to manage all of our um, Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra e-commerce business. How are you going to bust out as a brand? Uh, there's a lot of money being spent in a lot of brands and being on Amazon does not get you anywhere because everybody's on Amazon. We understand it's a very crowded space and that's why we are really focusing on a unique, new, innovative way to do beauty. The Academy is going to be a great aggregate for us to build buyers and sellers. We realized that through creating experientials versus just giving people product is really what's going to help us, you know, have a unique marketing spin on this brand. Well, terrific. Well, thank you, Shalini. Thank you so much. And I hope you join our tribe. So what did you all think of Ready, Set, Jet? Dad, I think you should start. Well, I, I, I don't use many of their products, but... Yeah. I didn't until today. She looks like a, you know, a spark plug entrepreneur, but uh, I'm wondering what the backup is. And she's covering India, not an easy country to work in, sell in, and I know it very well. Okay, Becky, what do you think? I think there are a lot of products like that out there. And I was trying to figure out what the distinguishing characteristic was. It seems like it's the trying to educate young girls. So I thought that was cool. And she seems like a pistol. She gets around, you know, she's a real mover and shaker. Scott, how about you? What'd you think? Well, having walked by makeup aisles in department stores and, you know, if you go look on Amazon, it doesn't seem like this fits my goal of filling a vacuum. Uh, I think we're trying to muscle our way into a pile of cosmetics that are out there. Bill, I, uh, I agree with you. India and the US are very big, complex, massive markets, all the rest of it. This is gonna be bazillions of dollars to go make it happen. And then you throw on top of it a little, let's give back and let's, let's solve women's issues. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I, we used to say all the wood behind one arrowhead, not a frag bomb in every direction and way. So I just think super, super leadership and energy and a dynamo and she fits your, I want to run through walls kind of person, but focus, focus, focus. Terrific. Yeah. I, I thought she was a dynamic salesperson. I liked her margins. And I do like going after the Indian market. The middle class has grown extraordinarily fast and uh, people are starting to look to image uh, in India. And I've, I've noticed that, that she is catching a wave there. 
with that, uh, we do thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around, and then you decide whether you're up, down, sideways, or somewhere in between. Okay, you ready? Thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. We are gonna move on and let's meet the next entrepreneur. We love these heroes, they do extraordinary things. They put their neck out there, they try new things. So let's meet our next hero. But before we do, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Healthy hip hop is for the children and for the culture. What personally inspired me to create healthy hip hop is I was that kid who was really influenced by hip hop culture and I didn't understand the importance of education. In the city where I come from, it don't seem like you get too many options. You either trying to make it rapping or playing ball, selling drugs, or you getting locked up. That's it. Unfortunately, I fell into that trap, thinking if you black, it's all you got, nothing else. I think that was largely in part to the fact that there was no platform that existed to show me anything else. But now that I'm a father, if nobody was gonna create a space for my kids to see themselves as something great, then I'm gonna be the one to do it. I'm gonna be the one to create a space for them, for us, so that they can see kids that look like them and the culture they come from in a positive light. The values of healthy hip hop and that drive it are family, faith, and, and passion that I'm getting up and building a legacy for my family that's bigger than just my immediate family, that's really provoking thought changing processes and building up a new generation of leaders, of positive thinkers, of people who want to leave a great impact on the world. So welcome back, and I am so excited that we're going to have another one of these heroes come present to us. I'm counting on great things from Roy Scott, uh, Healthy Hip Hop, Sesame Street of the 21st Century. Give us your pitch. My name is Roy Scott. I am founder and CEO of Healthy Hip Hop, an online platform powered by the arts and social interaction. Infusing hip hop culture and cutting edge technology to improve learning environments. See this guy in the middle? That was me once upon a time. What was I thinking? As a kid, I was heavily influenced by hip hop and I didn't understand the importance of education. So after graduating high school, I decided instead of going to college that I was going to be a rapper. Maybe not the best decision, yet on that journey I had my wake up call when I was picking up my son Justice from school. And I noticed him repeating my music word for word. These lyrics promoted drugs and violence. That was my light bulb moment. I would have to completely change my direction and my message. And this is when Healthy Hip Hop was born. Creating a virtual world of music, mindfulness, and motivation led by PJ Panda and the Healthy Hip Hop crew. Look at the boy PJ Panda in the background, you see him. Healthy hip hop, ooh, ooh. Everybody's been impacted by this global health pandemic, and right now, most of our kids are being homeschooled. This is a real problem for teachers and parents. The Healthy Hip Hop SaaS platform allows educators to live stream our educational programming to improve focus and engagement and encourage active learning. Our mobile application gives parents an easy to use tool to keep their kids engaged and empowers them to create custom videos just like TikTok, but in a much safer environment for children. Ooh, I'm so healthy, gotta be healthy. We make money by selling an annual subscription directly to parents, also through corporate partners who sponsor schools and school districts to have access to the Healthy Hip Hop platform. There are over 30 million parents of kids ages 12 and under and 2 million elementary teachers nationwide, making our total addressable market $1.2 billion annually. This year, we got accepted into the Social Impact Accelerator for Techstars in Atlanta. In a short amount of time, we've grown to over 5,000 active users, secured multiple pay pilots, and brought on three corporate partners who believe in our mission, vision, and value. And we were just accepted for the Google for Startups Black Founders Fund for a $100,000 non-dilutive investment. Healthy hip hop will be the trailblazers in the children's hip hop market. Join us as we transform a generation through music, mindfulness, and motivation. Tell a teacher, 
tell a parent to download the app and become a part of the movement today. Healthy hip hop is for the children, for the culture. Thank you. Terrific. First, I think you're going after the parents. That is the right place to go. That is where most educational software makes its money. And I think that your market size may not be as big as you think because a lot of people learn this way. And I think I would have learned more this way through hip hop or learning through music, but other people learn other ways. So you probably don't get all of the students. How do you grow this? How do you build on that? And what happens when hip hop's not cool and it's something else? How does this evolve over time? Absolutely. Well, we're looking at education as more of our entry to market. So we've been using the schools as a pipeline to get in, you know endorsed by the teachers that gets it in front of the kids and then it kind of migrates home. But big picture, we're looking at healthy hip hop as an OTT platform. So parents can stream the music, even though all kids may not learn through music, all kids love music and they dance, just people period, you know, love music. That's how we're looking at big picture, how we expand to being more than just education and ultimately being like an urban Disney. And when you're talking about hip hop music and culture, uh, hip hop is getting ready to be 50 years old and it's just continued to gain momentum. It's the number one genre in the world, but the problem is a lot of that messaging is not always healthy for our kids. So we fill that niche and that gap. Dad, you got any questions for him? Yeah, I am tone deaf. <laughs> and uh, if I, my teacher had tried to teach me through music, I think it would have been a total failure. Is it songs? Tell us a little more about what your product is app. and how you're going to sell it. Yeah, absolutely. So the app is live right now on iOS and Android. So think of the product as a Spotify meets TikTok in the curated environment for children and families. So when you download the mobile application, parents can stream the music. Parents love hip hop, right? But most of the time when their kids in their car, if they're conscious, they're probably turning it off or turning it to something else. So we're giving them a positive alternative of hip hop that they can stream exclusively in our app. And then we take that a step further where you can create a dance challenge similar to the TikTok app because all the kids are using TikTok but the problem is kids are vulnerable on TikTok. They're getting exposed to a lot of things they shouldn't be getting exposed to. So within our app, they can create those custom videos in our safe circle technology. So not everybody has access to your kids. So the product that we're focusing on is that app. And so you probably didn't learn through music, but if you put on some, probably what the Beatles, I used to rock with the Beatles. That, that might be you know you, what you came up on. You was rocking to the Beatles though, right? You, you danced and jammed to that. So even though you didn't learn to that, you still connected to that. And that's how we connect with children through music. So I'm gonna learn math through a, a rap song? Yes, you will learn math through a rap song. You will even be able to rap that back in our app and you will be able to create dances and different things. Those are things that young kids are doing today. You can wrap that back in our app. I like that. <laughs> Come on, man, you see this We're gonna wrap that back in our out. app. We're gonna... Hey, tap that. <laughs> See, I just thought I'm no more. Back in the morning. Back. Yeah. Stay in your lane. Hey, come on. Hey. I watched a little bit of your stuff on uh, Instagram. One of your rhymes was, there's no reason you shouldn't be cheesing about smiling. Got every reason to be cheesing. Smile, kids. Smile, kids. Come on. I thought that was great. But my question hey. is, you won that $100,000 from Google. What are you going to do with that? So that $100,000 is going to allow us to continue developing next iterations of our technology. We're right. really beefing up our sales and marketing and our customer acquisition strategies. The more important thing, even in that money, is we're getting full access to Google. So we're working with the Google Play team. We're working with the Firebase team. We're working with Google Ads. They're going to be highlighting our app to children and parents. Who else works with you? Because it looked like you did a lot of it. I have a co-founder. Wes Smith, he's out of Tampa. We have three full-time developers on our team, and we also have a part-time CTO right now. So we've got a pretty strong team uh, that, that's pushing this brand, and, and we're, we're poised to take this to the next level. Terrific. Okay, well, thank you very much, Roy. Okay, thanks so much for having me. I appreciate you.
So what did everybody think of Roy Scott and the healthy hip hop? Becky, you got any thoughts? Um, I have a couple of thoughts. First one is I really like the idea and I like his background switch to this, you know, thinking of kids and paying forward. And when I did do my due diligence and look at his things, I thought they were cute. He's a talented rapper. How talented a rapper is he? I told you, he's, he can rhyme reason with cheesin. Like smiling <laughs> is cheesin. You know, uh, a lot of parents create content or they create games for their kids to learn. And the reason that very few become big successes is so many people become parents and they all feel like they have a great solution and, uh, and so he's got so much competition. A lot of them haven't really figured out the business model, but he did. The business model is you do something that's a subscription service to the parents and you win. Is this preschool? It's uh, K-12, I think. We didn't give our kids phones till they were 12. We didn't give them game machines, we didn't give them phones, we didn't give them access to TV. You're so and we mean. told them once you got your homework done, you could go out and play sports. You were tough. I was so mean and the boys turned out okay. Did they talk We to were you? weak. With our kids, we were weak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, so... Um, that was bad. So that let's, was go to, let's go to thumbs. That's the tough part of this job. It's thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Which way are we going here? I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down to sideways. Becky, I'm not seeing your thumbs. I can't see Bill. Dad, I don't see your, oh, Becky's is straight up. Dad, where's your thumb? Oh, Dad's is down. Thumbs were a lot easier before the Zoom call. Let's move on. We're gonna go to our next hero, our next entrepreneur. I look forward to more heroism and more uh, great judging. But before we get to our next hero, let's see what's going on behind the scenes. Anybody with a Draper eyebrows can, can hum along, can wrap along with these eyebrows. I believe that there are four P's which are super important for the startup. People, product, process, and most importantly, the perseverance. In November of 2019, we were absolutely broke. We ran out of cash. We had invested 40,000 already. We had a choice of backing out. Should we close down? Should we try different markets? Akash took a personal loan. He went to Dubai himself. And there, within 13 days of hard struggle, you know, meeting with a lot of people. We had our first pink plant and our first angel investor. If that particular time did not stop us, I don't know what can stop us. I remember the time when COVID started, everybody everywhere around the world were doing webinars. And I was fortunate to actually be a part of one such webinar where Tim himself was speaking. Instead of just speaking about which sectors will grow and which sectors will go down, Tim actually spoke about the core behavioral changes which are going to happen in most of the customers. Because all of the teachers, students, parents are now being forced to use technology of some form or the other. And that is when it really struck me that the idea we have been having about Illumnus is just going to receive a major boost from that moment to now. I'll actually be facing them in person. It's just so exciting for me. Our next entrepreneurial hero is Illumnus. And let's hear the pitch. Hi, I am Rishi. I am Akash. And we are changing the way how education is experienced in the schools. Illumnus is a learning experience platform. Essentially what it does is it streamlines digital communication in a school environment between the four stakeholders, teachers, students, parents, and administration. In college, we use Moodle and it had great features, but the usability was really bad. Nobody liked it. After college, we started using Slack and we could see the difference. That is when we thought, why can't we have a Slack for education? The core problem which we are solving today is the different technological tools which every teacher and student is using in a school environment. Traditional learning management systems like Canvas, Moodle, Blackboard did not really take off during the pandemic, but users gravitated towards the new age solutions, the simpler solutions. We think modern problems require modern solutions. So in our platform, Teachers can access all these courses whichever they are teaching and students can access the courses whichever they are studying in. 
All these courses are just like WhatsApp groups in which live classrooms can be taken, daily homework assignments can be conducted, examinations can be conducted and that is just the tip of the iceberg. Because of the data continuum, parents are being able to track their child's academic performances every day. As well as school administrators, they can monitor the school entity's performances. So quick details about the company, we started in 2018. We launched the final product, which is live today in May 2020. Over the last four to five months, we have onboarded 22 clients, one in Dubai, one in UK and rest of them in India. This financial year, we have done $24,000 of revenue and we are staring at a pipeline of about $200,000. The business model is a subscription based model. So it's $2 per student per month. The reason why we are raising this money this round is because first we want to enhance the analytical capabilities of the product so we can add better value to the schools. And second, we want to move from the current distributor reseller led model to a pure SaaS model where a school can onboard themselves within minutes, try it out for a first maybe one month for free and then start using it on a daily basis. Terrific. Now, why can't I just do all this on Slack? Are you just tailoring Slack? It's our own design for sure. Slack can't really perform all the requirements of an education system. For example, Slack cannot give you a homework. Slack cannot conduct an examination. I've seen several like this. How are you gonna rise above the competition? By leveraging, because we have an extremely simple product, which is being used by all the students and teachers. The biggest client we have is in Dubai, 3000 students. And in the last two months, they've shared 1.5 lakh content. With so much of data being generated, we want to be able to tell the students and the parents, your kid scored 80 out of 100 in math, which every school does today. But you know what? In math, trigonometry is a strong subject. Calculus is a weak subject. In calculus, X is weak, Y is strong. And we can do that by tagging all the questions, all the content which is being shared on the data. And then you tell them, these are your strengths and weaknesses, and then here's your study plan. So they keep improving. So are you guys utilizing any open source technologies out there? There's Matter most, which is a Slack imitation. There's Jitsi out there for Zoom. Curriki Studio, which I'm very involved with, is completely open source. If you try and do this all proprietary, it's not gonna happen, but if you leverage the open source community. And I'd love to talk to you guys. I'm very, very excited about what you're doing. It's right on the button. Thank you. Thank you. You're underplaying a few things that you're doing right. SaaS, you're underplaying your mobile first strategy, which I think is outstanding. And you know, all the other LMSs are not really focused on that. And then thirdly, the one piece that having looked at what you're doing, your user interface is just awesome. I'm glad we found one for you here. Scott started Sun Microsystems, but he also started Kariki. He's really built something extraordinary there. So yeah, if you can tap into that, do it. It's all free and open. We should definitely collaborate. And by adding this authoring environment and this publishing environment to what you have, you guys will just get orders of magnitude, more technology embedded into your system. No charge from Kariki. Wow. Wow, thank you so much. That's that's extremely exciting. And most importantly, to have someone who actually understands the problem in the school environment, because we've been getting extreme feedbacks. The ones who understand the problem just love it. And the ones who don't, just, just don't really uh, appreciate it. And thanks a lot for that. So you have 3,000 users right now? We have 7,000 users, out of which 3,000 come from one school, which is the school in Dubai. It's the biggest client. And and what other yeah. feedback do you get from that whole system? I assume that includes the teachers, the parents. Yeah. Have you modified your app at all? We started with this particular client back in December last year. And of course, uh, we did not have the live classes module integrated and then pandemic came along and we had to do that in a matter of one and a half months. Apart from that, there are several tiny features and we are in the process of building a great book because it's a regulatory or a compliance requirement. Akash, you, you graduated from IIT Bombay. What was your major there? So I was in a major in chemical engineering and a minor in computer science. Terrific. I was thinking if it's computer science or electrical engineering, there are not many people that get into that program. You must have tested well. We were fortunate, I would say. Have you worked together before? 
So we're. Oh, you're brothers. Yeah. No, we're we're not brothers. We're brothers from different mothers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of us uh, have been friends back in college. He hardly participated in college activities. He was always working with the startups right from second year, interning here or there. His real brother actually also is a co-founder. And what did you do after college? He started his own healthcare company called Med. They raised three rounds of funding and then exited to uh, 1MG.com, which is the biggest health tech player in India right now. Did all the investors make money? I would say one third of the investors made money. What did you learn that you're going to apply to this business that you didn't apply properly to that first one? Previously, it was all about funding, funding. And later on, now it is all about you know creating the right value to the right customers. Terrific. Thank you so much for coming on the show and meeting the Drapers. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Tim. All right, hero! <laughs> All right, so what did we all think? Scott, you're the one who knows this industry the best. What'd you think? I'm a little biased on this one, but these guys are going after a really big problem that is pretty complex. And in fact, they're not really understanding all of it as deeply as they're gonna over the next few years if they're successful. The big problem they have is I don't think they're leveraging open source and I'd really like to help them on that. Not just from Pariki, because I'm giving it away for free but from all of the other places. They need to use open interfaces. They can't do this proprietary or they won't make it. I need to talk to them about that. I think I can coach them. They seem very coachable. The real problem they have is K-12 has no money and K-12 in India has less than that. But um, you know what, I, I think there's such a large volume there and by using open source and leveraging that, they can have a low overhead. These are a couple of kids out of school who have figured out there's a big problem and they're smart. They'll figure it out. Becky, what do you think? Fantastic. They could use a little rap, but um, <laughs> I did think they started. us. Get on the bus. Okay. <laughs> um, they are started in Dubai, where there's money. But it sounds like uh, Scott, you're going into India, in Bombay. Is that what you said? And we're going worldwide too. So the best thing is that you two met. That made doing this thing just totally worthwhile for me, even though it's been fun also. <laughs> Good, we want you back on the show. Dad, what did you think of this uh, this alumnus? I don't have really anything to add. I think I would uh, be able to help them a little because of my experience in India, but when I think of you and the whole team here, they'd be smart to use all of you. Terrific, okay. So, um, so now uh, uh, we're going to... Tim. Yeah. Tim. Tim. Oh, we gotta do thumbs. Okay, here we go, sorry. Okay, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs all around. Where are we gonna end up? We got some, we got a couple with two thumbs up. Awesome. Okay, now we come to the time in the show where we decide which of these three move on to the semifinals. Each of you will now talk about which one you like the best, Illuminous, Ready, Set, Jet, or Healthy Hip Hop. And let's start with Dad. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> which did you like? I liked uh, all of them, really. It, hip Hop. Probably my favorite. Okay, terrific. Uh, <laughs> Becky, what was your favorite? The alumnus, because potential, potential, potential. And it just seems like it's the one that sort of has its eye on a big, big prize. But I do have to put in a good word for the hip hop guy, because I thought he was doing good. 
And I like people who do good, even if they don't make money. Well, if they don't make money, nobody benefits. But yeah, maybe that maybe it's a well. Good. That's absolutely not true. But we won't discuss it here. <laughs> Why not? We're on the show, uh, Scott. Which was your favorite? <laughs> well, obviously, I'm I'm biased, but I think all three uh, CEOs were outstanding, and I love all capitalists. I love everybody out there trying to make a difference, looking for a niche, looking for value add. I will never say anything bad about somebody trying. Because let me tell you, I have failed more often than I've succeeded. But given what I'm doing right now with my .org curriculum, there's no question alumnus is the right one. And I think I can really help those guys. The education challenge with pandemics and lockdowns and remote learning and lifelong learning. That's the key to the kingdom everywhere. Terrific. Before we bring them all on, I do want to say that I did enjoy seeing all three they all had an interesting twist in what they were doing, even taking beauty and bringing people out of poverty. And hip hop, using the arts to train people, to teach people. And then, of course, getting the parents and the teachers and the students all to easily communicate through a system. So with that, let's bring them back on. We'll let them know what the crystal ball says. So thank you all for being on the show and thank you for all you do. You're all heroes. You've done extraordinary things just to get to this point. And so we're really pleased and proud to be able to associate with you and bring you here onto the show. Here's how it works. One of the three of you will move on and become a part of the semifinals. All of you will have the opportunity to crowdfund. And if you're one of the top three crowdfunders, you will jump right into the finale. Both of those can get you into the finale. And of course, the winner of the finale is gonna get $500,000 invested into their company. And we're so pleased to be able to do this and the crowdfunding was kind of our twist. I'll start with uh, Ready, Set, Jet. We love the idea that somehow beauty would allow people to sort of rise out of poverty and make the world a better place. You have a great heart you also can sell like crazy. And we think that there's some real strength there. The concerns are that you may be trying to boil the ocean. You may be trying to do too much rather than just putting it all behind one effort. Maybe it's just India cosmetics. The next one, healthy hip hop. We also love what you've done. The idea that people can learn and learn culture and learn a positive culture through art. Whether it's hip hop or any other form of art, we think that could be incredibly valuable. I also love the way your business model is working, the idea that you are going to get parents to pay a subscription. The thing that we're concerned about with you is that there's a lot of noise out there selling education. Alumnus, we thought that this was quite exciting that you'd be making it so that the administrator, the teacher, the parents, the students were all in communication through a tool. The concerns we have there are, it's a really tough market to sell into. Maybe in Dubai it's easy, but certainly in California, the schools are broke. Uh, you could maybe sell somehow into the parents. We kind of leave it up to the crystal ball as to who gets to move forward. So let's go to the crystal ball. Eeny, beeny, chilly, beeny, weeny, smeeny. I'm kind of rapping here. Meeny, weeny, feeny, sinny, beeny, kinny, deeny. Illuminous! Illuminous, you're headed to the next round. You go right to the semifinals, and the rest of you guys, you got to crowdfund like crazy so that you can get into the finale. Go get them. You guys are great. Keep up the good work. We're thrilled to have you. Good job. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you, everyone. They're a lot of fun. I had a wonderful time on Meet the Drapers. It was great to meet the entire family. And also just really fantastic for me as an entrepreneur to gain valuable insight and feedback from them. It was just a great experience. One that I'll always remember. Just I had a great time putting myself out there. That's, that's what this is about. Just getting in front of the right people and uh, telling your story and, and pitching your business. Super exciting. It was like a fanboy moment. I was so nervous. I mean, Tim Dripper, come on. That was a surprise for us. We didn't know Scott was going to be there. I think it really 
panned out because Scott really understood the problem we are solving. I would love for viewers to know that we do have a very focused strategy. I know it sounds like a lot, but we're really fortunate uh, to have a veteran rock star team. For me personally, the idea of democratizing funding for women across the world is super, super exciting. We are you know, changing a generation of children through hip hop culture, which is extremely important. The social impact is just as important as far as the financial and business impact. So that's why they should invest in healthy hip hop. We are extremely fortunate to be in the education space because everybody has been a part of the K-12 journey. Don't forget to go to the Republic site and invest in us. Thank you. See you next week on Meet the Drapers. Meet the Drapers. We're funding future with our tech, AI, VR, Bitcoin is the best, we'll build and work and grow with you, having fun along the way, we'll change the world.